everyone, welcome back to Stanford Medicine Tools for Healthcare Data Science. I am Priya Desai and this is part three of tutorial one. In this video, I'm uh, hoping to show you a repository of sample OMAP queries where um, you can go in and explore that repository and actually pick a query that you would like to run against, um, say, the sample so, uh, SYNPATH OMAP dataset. Um, and what I'm going to walk you through is how you would take that query, uh, translate it to BigQuery SQL, so it will actually run against the, the BigQuery dataset that we have in the, in the STAR training project. So this video should um, be particularly useful for those of you who feel like you may not have the skills to Query the BigQuery SQL database directly, but you know you would still like to explore that data set. So let's get started. So um, to start out, uh, go ahead and open a browser tab. Uh, let's go in and log into the, the BigQuery console. So go to the console. Uh, make sure that you're actually logged in with your Stanford uh, email account. Um, and make sure that the Google project that you're logged in is the SOM RIT STAR training project that you all should have access to. Uh, once you've done that, go ahead and click on this hamburger button um, and go ahead and open the BigQuery console. In the BigQuery console, you should, under resources, see the SOM RIT STAR training project. Um, once you open that, um, you should see the SYNPUF underscore 2M underscore CDM underscore 5329-1104 data set. This is the SYNPUF data set in the OMAP common data format. Uh, remember, you may see some other data sets here depending on when you actually access um, this particular project. Uh, but So don't worry about those. Those may or may not be the same as what you're seeing here on the screen right now, but you should definitely see the SYNPUF uh, data set. Um, go ahead and open that tab. And in here are all the SYNPUF tables uh, in the, this is all in the OMAP data format. So go ahead and pick um, any table you like. The reason we're doing this right now uh, is first we, before we go on to exploring the repository, we're going to test and make sure that, um, you know, your BigQuery access is actually working and you can actually um, query it. So go ahead and pick a table that you like. I'm going to go and pick the death table. Um, the simplest way to test and confirm that you actually can query it is go ahead, click the query table. So this is just a skeleton query that's formed here. Um, I'm going to say select star from some RIT training um, SYNPUF 2M CDM underscore 53 underscore 29 dot death. Uh, and I'm just going to limit this to say 100. So just to remind you all, this is how we refer to a table in BigQuery. It's almost like giving it the entire path name. So SOM RIT Start Training, this is the Google project name. SYNPUF underscore 2M underscore CDM underscore 53 underscore uh, 2019 1104 is the data set name and death is the table name. So you kind of have to give it the entire name in order to um, actually query this particular table. So go ahead and quick, uh, click Run. Um, if this runs and you actually get an output, that means your um, access is working fine. And we can go ahead with the rest of the tutorial. All right, so next, um, I want you to go ahead and open um, this URL https colon slash slash data.odyssey.org slash query library. This is the repository I was talking about. So go ahead and open it uh, in a different, um, on a different tab. Um, as you can see, this is the repository query library. Uh, and you have a lot of queries for, you know, for all the different tables 
in uh, OMAP. So you have they have they have a couple of queries for the care side table, uh, queries for the condition era table. You can see that they have a whole bunch of queries. Um, so feel free to take a few minutes to you know explore this repository. Um, find a question that you want to ask of the SynPuff dataset. Um, so um, yeah, I mean, go ahead, take a couple of minutes. I'm gonna find. I want to. I want a query from using the person table. So I'm gonna go look for that. Okay, so that's the person table. Um, okay, maybe this one. I am. Um, I like this query. Uh, number of patients grouped by year of birth. So if I go ahead and click it, uh, this query actually counts the year of birth across all the person records and it summarizes them. So that's the actual query. And as you can see, it, it walks you through what is, um, you know, what's the output. It should be the year of birth uh, and the number of persons in that year. So um, next, I want you to go ahead and open another tab. This time, um, this is the SQL developer uh, page. You know, basically click this URL. So this is the SQL render developer uh, page. What you can actually do here is basically cut and paste the query and have it will, this, this page will actually render it for you in whichever SQL dialect you want. So, uh, yeah, I mean, right now your big, your OMOP data is in the BigQuery dialect, um, but this query library, um, you know, maybe in MySQL or Postgres. So um, this is my query that I'm interested in. I'm gonna copy it, go ahead and paste it here. Um, as you can see, these two are identical because it's the SQL Server dialect, but I really want the BigQuery dialect. So I'm going to click BigQuery and um, it's changed just a little bit, mostly in uh, terms of, you know, whether it's uppercase or lowercase. So this same query rendered in the BigQuery SQL dialect is here. So I can actually just cut and take this query, copy it and go back to my BigQuery page. So, and so right under that old query of mine, I'm just going to put a semicolon and I'm going to go ahead and add that query. So a couple of things, um, these may be useful for you guys to know. BigQuery does allow you to run multiple queries at one go, so long as they are separated by a semicolon. So, so long as there's a semicolon separating them, I could have, you know, 12 queries here and that would be fine. It will actually run through all of them. I can keep this query here and I can um, comment it out. So I've commented it out now. Uh, the reason I want to keep this query here is because there is one piece that is, has to be corrected in this new query um, and that is this particular part, the CDM. As you can see, I have an exclamation mark. This is there basically means that there is there is an um, you know there is a bug. Go ahead and click that. It'll say data set saw RIT star training dot CDM was not found, um, and that is true. There is no CDM data set in this project, right? So what we have to do is actually convert. The cdm.person, we need to convert this table into this format because that is the sort of path name of our person table. So for that, I'm just going to copy this particular part, like right up to where it says death because death is the table name. And I already have the table name that is person in here. So I'm going to just replace that and then go ahead and close um, the quote. And as you can see, this has now turned green. Um, this query is valid. So I hope that was clear to everybody. Um, remember, you need to give it the correct, the correct, almost like the path name of the table. The table was the, is the person table. 
Initially, this was just cdm.person. Well, there is no CDM data set in the SOM RIT star training project. The name of the data set is synpuff uh, underscore 2m underscore cdm underscore 53 underscore 291104. So I needed to replace it with that and, you know, basically give it the entire path name. So go ahead and now you can run it. As you can see, it is running. Um, and here, that's a list of uh, number of persons born um, by year. So you can see it, we have, it goes, it has 75 uh, rows. So it looks like we have data all the way to 1983 in the Synbuff dataset. Um, go ahead and let's do another one. So go back to the query library um, and let's pick um, I don't know, maybe the condition, uh, this is the condition era table. I'm actually, I'd like to pick something from the condition occurrence table. So I'm guessing this, this is alphabetical. So I'm guessing it will probably come, uh, yeah. So after condition era is condition occurrence. Hmm. just pick some. Um, how about this one? Uh, counts of condition types. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. Um, this query is used to count the condition type concepts uh, in the CDM across all condition occurrence records. The input to the query is a value of the condition type concept ID. All right, so go ahead and it's actually uh, walking you through how many people have this concept, condition concept, um, which is the condition concept for nausea. So go ahead and copy it. This is a much more complicated query than the earlier query, but I, I deliberately want to show this to you just so that um, later on when you, you can actually use this query library and the SQL render to um, query the OMOP data set and I mean the the, St the Stanford OMOP data set so the star data set and you can use the queries here and as you can see these are more complicated queries they have left joins and we're going to talk about what exactly that means um, you know further down in the tutorial but I wanted to just show you how you would um, you know basically convert a more complicated query to work on your OMOP um, or on the Stanford OMOP. So go ahead, go to the SQL render, go ahead and replace that. Uh, we want it to be in BigQuery, so that's good. Like, let's go ahead and copy that. Uh, go back to the BigQuery library. I'm going to paste it right below this one, just like I did before. Yes, it's going to go red because uh, there are a bunch of things I do need to correct in this. Uh, once again, I'm going to um, comment this out. Uh, all right, so now I know that the one thing I do need to do is everywhere where it says CDM dot table name, I need to replace it with this, with the entire um, table name. So let's go ahead and do that. select um, blah 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 from select blah blah from here so in here um, group one as condition type count left join um, select concept ID and then I change it here as well Okay, right. it says it's become green. It says this is valid. Let's go ahead and run it. Um, and there you can see. So I have, I looked for the condition 
um, concept ID 372409, which was the condition for, um, you know, for the, for the diagnosis of nausea. So the frequency of nausea occurring on the first, in the inpatient header, in the first position is 1740 and, and the second position is 633,894 um, in the second position. Or outpatient, in the outpatient header, the first position, uh, the, this particular condition occurs that many times. So as you can see, this you can actually go back to your query library and explore um, other conditions that may be of interest to you. Um, things like what are a person's comorbidities, what's the frequency of a hospitalized, uh, of somebody being hospitalized for a particular condition, um, and so on. So I hope this has been useful. Uh, Remember that when you get access to STAR OMOP, you can actually use this library to develop your query. Um, the only thing to remember is that you would need to change the CDM name. Um, so I hope this has been helpful and I will see you guys next time. Thank you. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.